Hey everyone, Doug here with B&H. Panasonic's GH5 has been a go-to camera for filmmakers and content creators for a few years now. And today we're looking at an update to that very camera. This is the Panasonic GH5 Mark II. It may look largely identical to the GH5, but there are big improvements here to the AF system, along with the addition of live streaming straight out of the camera, no computer required. There's also another announcement to make, but you'll have to keep watching to find out. Let's begin. We took the GH5 Mark II out to Coney Island and got an early taste of the summer. And it's a great place to test out some of the key updates to the camera. Number one is that unlike the original GH5, Vlog L is included here, much like it was on the GH5S. In fact, many of the changes that you see here have actually been brought over from more recent Lumix cameras, such as the S1H and S5. Recording-wise, we're also now looking at 4K 60p recording in 10-bit 420, and yes, that is internal, plus more frame rate options in the Cinema 4K modes, but we'll get into that in a bit. The other big feature here, Wi-Fi live stream. You can actually stream in a number of ways from the GH5 Mark II, but it doesn't get any easier than simply tethering it to a phone and streaming straight to YouTube. First time using the GH5 II, and one of the biggest features they brought over from the S5, remember they brought over a lot of features from the uh, S series cameras. Um, it really helps here with exposure, it's the luminance spot meter. Tiny square here that indicates exposure for that region in the sky here. It says plus 1.2 stops. Now that just means that it's 1.2 stops over middle gray. My zebras are set to 65. I actually have two zebras set, one for 80, which um, in Vlog L at least is the top exposure, and one at 65. So right now, some of the sky is hitting that 65%. And you can see here it says 2.9 stops. So I'm gonna back it off just a little bit bring most of the sky down to around 2.4. Now what we have is a pretty safe sky, only some of it towards the bottom is getting a little hot, but not overexposed. I should also talk about the waveform monitor. You'll notice it right here. Just like it is in the GH5, it's a great tool. Uh, helps a lot with getting exposure right. But big improvement just in terms of usability, it can change size, which is huge because the GH5's was fixed. Now you could move it around, but it was pretty big. So this gives you the opportunity to shrink it down and just keep it out of your way. Vlog L, big news here is that it is included. So if we go over, you know, you have like 79, and here's some new ones. You have Cinelike V2 and Cinelike D2. These were both on the S1H and S5. So these are updates to the Cinelike profiles. Uh, as you know, these kind of give you good out of camera looks. One more intended for straight to video, so V2, and the other one for uh, retaining as much dynamic range as possible, hence D. So we also have some stylistic ones. There is the L Monochrome S style, and going over, we have the L Classic Neo, which is intended to give you a more filmic look straight out of camera. If you're familiar with the GH5, you probably know that a lot of the Lumix lenses, and for that matter, most mirrorless lenses these days are focused by wire. Now, that's not necessarily a good or bad thing, but in a lot of cases, it does mean that your focus uh, your ability to manually focus is a little less predictable. And in cases like cinema, that's not really desirable because we do want precise manual focus. Now, in this, taken again from the S5, is the ability to change the linearity of the lens from a fully linear response to a non-linear response. So if you come around here, I'll show you. Going in the menu here, we have lens and others going down focus ring control. Now by default it is non-linear, that's the usual behavior. So we can do non-linear or linear, which goes with the angle of the focus ring, and that is kind of how a mechanical lens would work. Now by default that works with most mirrorless lenses, uh, most micro four third lenses I should say. But you can get a little more specific in the set option with Lumix lenses in particular. You can actually specify 90, 120, 150, 180, 210, 240, and so on, all the way to 360. Um, and that basically means that you can change this for different follow focus setups if you want, or if you're just more familiar with a uh, longer or shorter throw. So now I'm going to go out and in. 
it's a direct response. This is much, much better than the nonlinear response, uh, especially you know if you have to go in on really tight uh, and shallow focuses. This is perfect for that. So finally, these types of lenses are absolutely usable in a manual focus situation. A key improvement to the GH5 Mark II can be found in its AF system. AF speed and tracking are dramatically improved here versus the GH5, and that's largely thanks to the updated Venus engine that comes from the S1H. But let me just show you. It's tracking me as I go in and out of frame to the left and right. It holds up very well, and the reason for that is, despite the fact that it has the same 225 area DFD system as found in the original GH5, it inherits the new processor from the S1H, which gives it increased performance and processing speed for all that AF calculation data. What that means is that you effectively have the same performance on the GH5 II as the Panasonic S5. Now, if you remember from that camera, when you go into APS-C crop mode, you have even more performance because it's, of course, reading less off the sensor. Smaller region means there's less to read off and it can keep up faster. That same principle applies to the GH5 II because it's an even smaller sensor than that. As a Micro Four Thirds sensor, it can read off faster and AF performance is increased dramatically. We can see that in the way that it locks on, holds, and of course, just the speed at which it does all these things. There's also functionality improvements. Now you have head, body, and animal detection, whereas in the GH5, you only had face and eye. Slow motion shooters will also love to hear that while you still can't use AF when recording in the VFR modes, you can at least use AF in VFR before recording. The biggest new feature of the GH5 Mark II is its live streaming capabilities. Now, not too long ago, I took a look at Panasonic's BGH1, which itself felt very familiar to the GH series in particular due to its menus, sensor, and recording specs. A lot of that work has really paid off here because the GH5 Mark II makes it way easier to stream. So we're here in my backyard, welcome. And while I can't stream for you today, what I can do is show you how to pair the camera to the smartphone and it's super easy. The Lumix Sync app here, as soon as you open it, it guides you immediately into registering the camera to the phone, even through the menus. So it's telling me to go through menu, Bluetooth, Bluetooth pairing. What it'll show me is the address on here and the app is gonna look for that and it immediately detected it. So I'm just going to pair it and it should just take a few moments. Okay, so it's registered uh, and now we can see the front menu. Uh, all the options have been illuminated. If we go to others, we can see live streaming. So you have a few options here. You have stream with Facebook, YouTube, or RTMP, RTMPS. That's if you have a custom address. Now, the great thing is if you have an account, let's say a Gmail account or a Facebook account already on the phone, you go to it. Let's go to YouTube and it has my email addresses listed. Now I'm not going to show you them, but they're here. And all I have to do is click it, hit OK, and it's already there. So I can set up everything from my Wi-Fi access point, and you do need Wi-Fi, by the way. All right, so then I'm gonna set up the streaming quality, and you can see the options here. I have uh, all the way from 720p to 1080p in 60 FPS, running all the way at 16 megabits per second. Probably not a great idea if you're on cellular tethering that, but it is there. Once you hit set to the camera, it sends all this information and creates an event on YouTube, generating a YouTube link for you, which you can send out to anybody. You can tweet it out, you can email it to people. All of it's done essentially through the camera once the phone gives it all the information. That's it. If you want to do things more traditionally, the GH5 Mark II also supports the Panasonic Lumix Tether software on either Windows or Mac OS, which would let you connect over USB-C and then type in RTMP keys to stream straight from the desktop. You don't need a capture card for this solution either, but it does limit your output to 1080p at 30 FPS. Now for the sensor, we're looking at the same 20.3 megapixel CMOS sensor. Now, of course, that's also a micro four thirds, same as the GH5, but we have an anti-reflective coating on the sensor this time that mitigates flaring coming in to the sensor. That's regardless of the lens you attach. Now the sensor also has had its optical low pass filter removed, which means you should get a slightly sharper picture on the GH5 II versus the GH5. But the improved engine here 
has allowed for more moray suppression. So you shouldn't have to worry about moray just because of the OLPF's removal. Resolution here, you can still do Cinema 4K, that is the DCI 4K resolution, except now you can do it up to 25 or 30 FPS in 422 10-bit, which is upgraded from the 24 FPS only on the GH5. You can also shoot up to 60 or 50 FPS in Cinema 4K, as long as you go down to 420 still 10 bit though, so you have the color grading flexibility. Now when it comes to VFR, we did mention before that autofocus does work in VFR before recording. But beyond that, you also get VFR support in the Cinema 4K modes, up to 60 FPS normally, and if you use the anamorphic modes, you can go up to 50 FPS with VFR. Now in a beach situation, looking at an LCD screen is always going to be a little challenging, but luckily the GH5 II does have a 1.5 times brighter screen than the GH5, which means that it's a little bit easier to see out here. And that's great because combined with all the exposure tools, it makes a difference. So as you can see, the body of the GH5 Mark II is largely identical to the original GH5. There's only some slight marking changes here, including a red record button that bring it in line with the other more recent Lumix cameras, and a color profile button taking the place of the function one button. Other than that, most of the physical changes are strictly internal. You still have two SDXC card slots for recording and all of the same physical connections on the left side, including mic, headphone jacks, full-size HDMI, and USB-C. Now, the USB-C connection actually supports power delivery this time. It's not just the data transfer. So that means you can power the camera and charge the batteries through the USB-C port. And with a future firmware update, it'll also be able to be used with a USB Ethernet adapter if you want to hardwire your streaming connection. Another nice update is the camera's use of the newer DMW BLK22 batteries first seen on the S5. Now don't worry, unlike the S5, you can still use your older GH5 batteries here, the DMW BLF19, but only the newer charger can charge both types of batteries. Other than that, it's effectively the same body. You can even use all the same accessories, especially the DMW XLR1 microphone adapter. Thank you for being so patient, because the GH5 Mark II isn't the only camera being announced today. That's right, Panasonic is also announcing the next step in the GH family, the GH6. Now, you have no idea how much I wish I could show you pictures of this, but we don't have any. We do have some key specs, though. This isn't an iteration of the GH5, but instead, the GH6 is built around a completely new engine and sensor and promises 4K 120fps 10-bit capture. It'll even have 10-bit 5.7K recording up to 60fps and will release sometime in 2021. So we'll let you know more as soon as we find out, so stay tuned for our inevitable test drive of the GH6. It's nice to see Panasonic updating the GH5, even though the GH6 is on the way, because when that camera does drop, there will effectively be a lower cost option that still has some of the most up-to-date features. The AF and color science improvements in particular make it easier to keep the GH5 Mark II in your kit along with the newer Lumix cameras. And the live streaming functionality is genuinely one of the easiest ways I've ever seen to live stream straight out of a camera. That's it for the GH5 Mark II. I'm Doug with B&H, and I'll see you next time.